Hi everyone. Hi everyone. It's a proud honor and privilege to introduce the most distinguished fashion designer, Mr. Wendell Rodriguez. Please, Jaipur, have a round of applause for him. He's <laughs> built a tiny Indian state of Goa on the fashion matter. To establish his designs further, he started moving to the ancestral villages in Goa in 1993. <coughs> He's here to talk about the session Size No Bar. So it tells about nothing is too easier to become comfortable in what you're wearing. He's here to talk about not being afraid to tap the inner narcissism in you. So we got to wait for the uh, so we got to wait for the surprise element that's waiting for everyone. Just wait for it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, can I welcome Wendy Rogers? So on stage, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would first like to thank uh, Meeta Kapoor, my literary agent and the force behind CIE for inviting me here because I think it's, this is a great opportunity to address many problems that we, that we have in our daily lives as far as size is concerned. Um, I want to hands up but you can timidly put it up or bravely put it up. When was the last time you saw yourself completely naked in the mirror? Oh, so we have very few hands up, right? Oh, more hands up. Great. So, you know, I think that's the litmus test for... I want the lights on because if anyone's sleeping, I'm going to call them. <laughs> <laughs> that's the litmus test for A, loving your body no matter what the size is. I think when we talk about size, we only restrict ourselves to numbers. Everybody uh, who knows me, I'm a duffer at maths. I always fail. Even in SSC, they decided this poor Bichara is getting a first class or almost distinction. Let's pass him. So they gave me 25. But I must have got about 25. The only inches I know truthfully are inches and centimeters. And they don't really matter to me at all what the inches and centimeters are because People uh, tell me, and I've measured women's bodies, you know, when I studied in Los Angeles, I had a great teacher who taught me how to cut, and how to sew, and how to make patterns. And he said, Wendy, you are the eye. I want you to learn to read people. So he would take me down Beverly Hills, and he would say, tell me what's that woman's uh, hips. And I would say, 36. And then he would say, and what is that lady's breast? so and so and can you ascertain the cup size and first it bothered me a lot I said I, I, I don't think I'll be able to do this but with western fashion we can do it we can, I can read every single person in this room without taking a measure tape to your body and I, I don't want to embarrass anyone nor do I want to embarrass my friends coming out right now but it is a technique it is something to do with lateral reading, what I call lateral reading, which happens in Western clothing. So I had this, by the end of the term, I was superbly happy that I could read women's sizes, men's sizes perfectly. I would say he's wearing a jean size so-and-so, she's wearing so-and-so bra. And, but then, then when I came to India, I realized I lost that great art. I couldn't read anymore. And the reason I couldn't read anymore is that the way Indian clothes were made, they were made to flatter Indian women of any size. They were made to cut the body diagonally, so it, I lost the lateral line, I lost the vertical line, and in basically I lost all the lines and my ability to read. 
because whether it's a sari or whether it's a dupatta strung over uh, somebody's shoulder, all everything got lost in these wonderful drapes, in this wonderful sense of you know whatever I was trying to achieve, and I lost it. But then I realized later on that I could get it back again if they wore Western jewels. And still today, in my shop, uh, I tell my staff, measure him out, measure her out. And before they even write the number down, I know the number. I know the number because, for me, size is a very relative thing. It's one thing. Do you know, uh, my models, they come like factory produced. They are all the same size. If they don't conform to the size, they are not in the show. So everybody is like a 32, 33 bus size, a 24, 25 waist size, and a 36 non-child-bearing hip size. I say non-bearing child hip size because when I was drawing sketches in Paris, they would say, my teacher, Rose Gire, would say, that your hips are so small, Mr. Roderick, Mr. Rodriguez, they are never going to give children. So you better make them more curvy. And she was preparing me for India, I think. Uh, so uh, when we cut our clothes today, we cut our clothes as that the top is a medium. But the minute we go beyond the bus line, uh, the empire line, or the hip line, we go into one size larger. Because Indian women do have beautiful chai-bearing hips. And we should be proud of them. Because we have this big population, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, before I go on to this uh, size issue, I would like to invite on stage if somebody can clear that table, that would be great. And if we can cut the backlights. Uh, sorry. If we can call on stage four ladies who have bravely volunteered to come up on stage over here. Fortunately, they are all normal. By normal, I mean, you know, in my sizing system, in the shop. I refuse to call women large, extra large, and double XL. If you come to my shop in Goa, you're going to find everything racked according to size. You don't have to pour through insect thin sizes to get your size. So all the racks are slim, medium, voluptuous, voluptuous goddess, very voluptuous goddess. Because I refuse to call women large, extra large, and double XL. We are in the East, we enjoy our sizing, and I think if you come to my shop, I, I urge you, I think it's the only place on the planet that you have a free bar. So if you come from a dry state like Gujarat, the, the men put one lakh on the table and they say, let her shop. Meaning, her meaning the wife. When she's finished 56,000 or 60,000, then they'll say, please buy for your sister. Please buy for whatever, because you can drink this scotch. <laughs> In the bar that we have, which is a small veranda overlooking the Tanjan Garden. So then, this guy has a scotch and she's shopping and everything is happy. Then he wants another scotch, so we get another like from him. And it's a good ploy which my partner, Jerome Marevi, you know, I'm an openly gay man. I have a French partner of 34 years. Next year is going to be 35. And uh, uh, we learned this trick in Istanbul where we lived for six years. And we had a shop called Vaco. Not how you spell it, but it was spelled V-A-C-C-O. And Vaco had a bar in the men's department only. We decided let's, let's have it in our shop. Got into a lot of trouble in the excise department. And they, who wanted to uh, make us pay, we said we're not paying. Sorry, we're giving free drinks. This is Goan hospitality at its best. Uh, even the taxi drivers have a drink sometimes, so they're not allowed to drink and drive. But they bring us clients and that's fine with us. So when we started this, uh, this bar outside, it was great fun because uh, for 20, I mean, I don't, I don't know, a bottle of vodka must be costing what, 1000 something over here. In Goa it's like 700 bucks or 600 bucks. So for 20 rupees more, we got 2 lakhs of business. And it was great fun because we made the money, they had the drinking coming from the dry spray. But uh, so we, we had great fun with the clothes, most importantly with the sizes. Because there were women that came to us, for the first time in the country when I started my career, we began to measure women at Garden Varelli because we were coming out with the Preta Pote line. And Indian women came in such a variety of sizes. From Kashmir down to Kanyakumari, everything was different. So we were making this 
styling chart which I finally released two years ago at Lackney like Fashion Week, where we began to study women's sizes. And we realized that we should uh, validate and make all those sizes happy, which is why we have these sizes like slim, medium, voluptuous, voluptuous goddess, and very voluptuous goddess. It was a rare case where voluptuous wanted to become voluptuous goddess. And uh, they are the highest selling racks in my shop. The slim girls only fit the models, that slim size. And the models are sweet enough, they say we have no money, we have to pay for Gold's Gym or some other. <coughs> and we, we, give them a, we give them a substantial discount. And um, the worst are the film actresses who are so conjuice with all those crows that they make. They don't want to pay us. They have, they have a WR policy, which I misunderstood as a Vegas Rodics policy. <laughs> it wasn't a Vegas Rodics policy, it wasn't even a Western Railway policy, it was a wear and return. So they wanted to see. I said, why the hell should I give Karina Kapoor who's making so much of money or my even my friend Deepika Padukone who I uh, who I discovered in a in a mall in Bangalore or Anushka Sharma who's a friend of mine who I discovered in another shop in a Rangle shop in Bangalore. I am not going to give him free clothes boss. You pay it and you keep it with your perfume and your perspiration. <laughs> so now we are going to bring out four brave ladies. Can we have your loud ladies? Brave ladies, okay? They think I'm going to shame them. It's quite the reverse. I'm going to praise them. Come, come. Not in any order. Please welcome our four. Yeah. Now they have requested that I put a backlight off so they'll be seen through their clothes, okay? So can we have it off? I've had enough power, enough of publicity of 10 minutes. Oh, oh, you want to show it off? Okay. So, as as you can see, this is these ladies volunteered very bravely that they were going to get a makeover change. And keep the clothes there. And keep, and, uh, sorry, pay for the clothes later at 35% discount. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and uh, no, so these four ladies along with Meeta Kapoor uh, bravely agreed to get out of their clothes, not in front of you guys, get out of their clothes and into the into my clothes and then we're going to call them back one by one. We have one dress, we have one tunic and trouser, we have one kaftan and we have one sari. So they're going to come out in that order. Okay? Ladies, please go back and change. This is, this is an Oprah Beauty show or better. <laughs> so, do you know, uh, when, we, when we are talking about fashion and sizes, Everybody thinks, most people think rather, that the color black makes you slim, right? Wrong. It doesn't make you slim. Black is a very good color to wear when you're standing against a black backdrop. If you have a party in your garden and there's only darkness behind you, wear black. But can you imagine like a black, big, voluptuous dress against a white background? It doesn't work. When we took our girls to this world contest or Miss Universe contest, we would call up the organizers and say, what is the backdrop? Then based on the backdrop, we would choose the dress and we would spy on the other contestants. Poor Miss Venezuela, Miss Venezuela is the most competitive. We had to make sure that she was out of the contest, out of the top three. So we would find out what dress she was wearing. We would ask our own girl, well, do, you know her? do you know her finale dress? They would say it was so and so. So we purposely found out the backdrop. We sent out Aishwarya Rai with a white gown, with white gloves. Sent Shishmita out in the same thing. Sent Yukta Mukhi in a blue dress because all the other girls we heard were wearing white so that she'll stand out. Lara Datta in a red gown so that she's going to jump out and stand out against everyone. But the thing is the backdrop. So ladies and gentlemen, find out the backdrop first. Call your friend and say, where is the party? Is it in the garden? Then if you are a certain voluptuous size, we are black. If it's, if it's against a white backdrop, we are white. Better still, we are colour because we are Indian. We have a 6,000 year legacy of clothing. We want you to enjoy our clothing legacy. Please do not listen to these western brands who tell us the trend is purple this season. I'm sorry, the trend is purple this season, it makes me look like death. So I'm not going to wear purple. 
the minis are the season and you know we are crawling on the floor like Krishna. All of us are brown knees, right? Who has white knees? Only some Goras. So, we can't wear minis. Sorry. It's out. So, don't go by these trends. You just go by what makes you and your style look beautiful. You Please don't listen to designers who say orange is the new color or purple is the new color or they say anarkali kurtas are the new thing. Anarkali kurtas, sorry, make us look like Christmas trees. Swirling, dancing Christmas trees. Are you, as the as legendary Eve Saint Laurent said, you wear the clothes, you don't wear the clothes, you don't let the clothes wear you. So when a lady enters the room, we want to know more about her mind. When we talk about big sizes, I want to know what is the bigness quotient of her mind. I am still to meet Angelina Jolie. I don't care about her beauty. I heard she sticked in because she stayed at the hotel with my friend owns. And I didn't get to meet her, but it's fine. I want to know about that person's mind. So you wear clothes that show your mind, which means keep the focus on your face. Not the size. The only size we want to know is the size of your generosity of spirit, the size of your intelligence, the size of your compassion, and the size of your wisdom. We And I'm sorry to insult some men in the room, but most women are wiser than men. And this is not because this is a woman's summit, okay? I'm saying it on a fact. Uh, I, did, I, I was talking to Meeta earlier and I said, you know, uh, ladies mature faster than uh, men. And you can see teenage boys are like, you know, like little puppy dogs. <laughs> but teenage girls have got their wits about them, they know exactly what to do, how to grab the guys, how to dump them, how to do whatever they want to do. So, we want that largest for you to come into your face because there's a shloka in Indian saying that says, that the, that the clothes, uh, the body is a suit of clothes that the soul wears. And I did a collection once based on that. For my first collection as the only first designer at the largest garment fair in the world, I did a collection that was based on that shloka. It was called Clothing the Soul. We are not clothing just our bodies. We are clothing the person inside. So your clothes must speak about you. When I travel, whether I am traveling on a cruise, when I'm walking the streets of New York or London or Paris, I will wear my Indian clothes. They have a 6,000 year old legacy. Believe me, no other country on the planet except for countries like Peru wear that ethnicity on their, on their bodies. We have fortunately not fallen prey like the poor Japanese and the Chinese who wear dull grey suits, black suits, brown suits and walk around with sad faces. We are Indian, we celebrate our colour. Celebrate your colour. Celebrate our diversity, celebrate your ethnicity. Please don't wear Karan Johar, um, uh, uh, Lenga, Ghagra Choli if you are a Bengali or a nice Chennai girl. Because then you are completely ruining everything. You have to go back to that lady who told me, put, uh, Adisa Lerong told me, put yourself into the clothes. Put your ethnicity into the clothes. You are the only one who can talk about your culture. If Rohit Bal can do Kashmir, that's his excellence. Sabya Sachi and Amika Khanna do Calcutta best. And if somebody tries to do Goa better, I'll kill them. <laughs> I want to wear the clothes, I want to wear the size and I don't care about size because as I said, size is in your mind. We are now going to bring out our voluptuous ladies. Please put your hands together. So they are all wearing venue products, okay? If you don't applaud, <laughs> can you open that shawl sideways so that we can see uh, what's underneath? So this is an asymmetric uh, style which I introduced to the country. And when I first introduced it in 1999, yeah, yeah. By the way, she's wearing a Suzanne Sablo uh, Pashmina shawl. Now, when I first introduced it in uh, uh, 1989-19, everybody said, hey, kya hai? 
यहाँ से वहाँ तक जाते हैं इस इस जो कैम लाइन तो आई सेड नो दिस इस कॉल एसिमेट्री देन इस इस वाइज इस वाइट वाइट इस फॉर मोनी राइट व्हाई शुड वी वेयर वाइट वी वेयर वाइट व्हेन व्हेन पीपल डाइ बट आई सेड आई मुझे गिव दिस कंट्री द थर्ड स्टेटिक वेयर वाज इन देन इंडियन फैशन फर्स्ट स्टेटिक वाज एपिसेंटर यूएन र uh, nowadays we have that in uh, shari lehenga clothes. We have all these uh, gay fashion designers who think that they are Maharani, so they dress the Maharajas as well with pearls and diamonds and all. And they are like nobody. They are like nobody. They want to look like that. And then finally, uh, the, the second aesthetic was based between Bollywood bling and uh, the hippie kitsch from Goa. I said I am going to run out to the third aesthetic, this aesthetic. The yoga, Ayurveda, cleanliness. The, uh, the beauty of a clear Indian mathematical mind and that's how I gave India minimalism, eco-friendly and resourceful. Next model please. <laughs> Come, who's the next, whoever's ready. So you saw earlier in a lovely pants, suit and jacket. So here we have what is called color blocking. Uh, beautiful color clock of time. If you are a hostess at a party, please make sure that you stand out, okay? And the only way to stand out is by color. You've seen the Queen of England. She'll stand out in terms of color because from all the colors in the crowd, she'll wear only red, only yellow, only blue, whatever it is. Now we don't have to mix and match uh, like uh, Princess Diana did in the 80s and 90s, where if she wore a red suit, she wore red shoes. Now you can mix any shoes. Now, so we give you the liberty, but please wear color and wear Indian color. As you see, it looks nice. She's got slits on the side. If she didn't wear her trousers, it would be better, but no. <laughs> she should not wear a hot pant. Her. I, oh, and be your age. Don't think of age as a number. Age is a beautiful thing. I, I always say to myself, when am I happiest? Was I happiest when I had a great body at 20? No, I'm happiest right now. Today is the day, every day face the camera and say, I am going to make this a great day. And I am 57 years old, 57 and a half a year. I will be 20, I will be 58 next year. This is the day of my life and this is the year of my life. And that's what you should do, celebrate every single day. <laughs> next please. So you saw her in her skirt, right? Now we see her uh, sexier. <laughs> My dear friend is wearing a black linen dress. You think, you know, I can't carry off linen. You can carry off linen. And the great thing about those back wing, uh, those square sleeves, yeah, those square sleeves, is that A, you can slap someone with it. B, you can hide a large hip, which she doesn't have. But you can hide a large enough hip. If it's in a softer fabric, then it's going to look better. So use, use that transparency. Use that liquidity, or that fluid look to create something fluid, something that's going to confuse the eye and make me not read what is your size. Last lady up, please. <laughs> so, my dear friend is wearing a kundi sari. Do you know when we first decided to weave this, this sari had been lost to tradition because it, it was worn by a tribe. And the tribe didn't want to wear it because the tribe thought that people are going to identify that with the lower tribe and would show their caste. The higher caste, people didn't want to wear the sari because they felt they didn't want to wear the lower caste sari. So this original sari is actually woven in black, uh, red, sorry, red, white and black. And I said if you have to change the concept and revive the sari after a hundred years of Portuguese rule, where the sari became defunct, we were A, going to change the colors. So what we did was, there was a forest on the Goa, Maharashtra, Karnataka border. We decided that we were going to take that, that forest, which was being completely ruined by tribes, and poor things were using the forest to uh, make firewood and cook. Now these ladies were sitting on the ground and they were cooking. Then they got asthma, then they got eye trouble. And we said, and the forest went away. The animals went away and we stepped in as an NGO to say, you are going to now revive this forest. 
you ladies, you tribal women, are going to revive this forest. So we grew the leaves that we wanted to grow and the trees that we wanted to grow. Whether it was indigo, whether it was manjista, has anyone heard of manjista? Manjista is a red dye that is used from the time of the Mahabharata. It has antiseptic qualities. And they would tear shreds of it off and wipe it, uh, wear it around their wounds to heal their bodies. And it is this Majista uh, dye as affluent was uh, being used later on in our fields. We have a field in Goa where we actually grow this Majista as the only field that didn't get attacked by pests because of that dye. It's a pink dye that we see at the bottom. Now, we, after seven years, guess what happens? So we said we are going to give you gas, we are going to plant arteries, so my eco goa room, I have many rooms in my eco goa. My eco goa room is going to get full of beautiful clothes, dyed naturally, because after giving resort wear and uh, no, 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 nobody saw a uh, you know, sparkling bikini under a sari, Georgia sari on my eco I said I am going to give it to them. I am going to put the sarong in satin and give it to them. So we gave them first minimalism, then we gave them eco wear and then we gave them eco friendly. Because I grew up in Paris at a time when they had a Chernobyl disaster. So, this, uh, after seven years, after giving them free gas and telling them every three months we wanted some part of the plant or the tree, because we would strip it of the leaves or the flowers or the bark and something, so that the, uh, the, the forest came back, the animals came back. The biggest change, ladies and gentlemen, was the fact that we got our eco-friendly dyes. We could weave the Kundi Sari and made a comeback after 100 years. But the biggest change was not what we expected. The biggest change was the ladies who were cooking on the floor, on a, a chula, on a little firewood log, suddenly were given a table with a gas range on it and the gas cylinder underneath. So suddenly the children who were talking up against, uh, talking down to their mother. The husbands who were talking down to their women, they all got a social shock. Because now, the women of the tribe were eye to eye with them. And on that note, I would like to end this success story where women in farming is very important. We make sure that all our girls never leave us, whether they are embroidery girls, whether they are sewing girls. I tell them, this company has a policy you have your, you get married, have your children, come back to us even after 10 years or even after 20 years, after your children are grown up and you have nothing to do, we will take you back because you have art, you have the color in your hands. And as, as owners of companies, as people who have responsibility, please spread the word, empower women because you all are all multi-handed goddesses, in my opinion. You all can get up in the morning, I see Bombay ladies, get up in the morning, do uh, dhobi for their children, then pack the different lunches, then send the husband and children off, take the train, on the way to the train, they'll buy some vegetables at the other station, clean them, go at lunchtime, do other work, come back in the evening, cook, clean and do whatever they have to do. In the end, they are the goddesses that I admire and I will forever support. Thank you, ladies. God bless you. And keep all the women well and look after our men, please. Thank you. Oh, you have a question. Yes. I will be timed up here in the morning in the front row for two minutes. Yes. Hi. My friend, I had a pet talk with her in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on Radio Michi 98.3 FM. Hi, Tanya was there, Wendell Billy. And after going through this session, I really feel that uh, when age is just a number, weight is just a number, and in the morning also I told you my maths is really weak, so I'm not going to care about my weight anymore and just forget about going no, no, to my No, size is a number, okay? Yeah. Our models are 36 inch hips. Okay. And then people, uh, ladies come and tell me, or you know when my hips are 42? What is 42, yeah? Do you know if you take front, back and two sides, between 36 and 42 is this much. It's not a big thing. We as designers, our job is to make you look taller, slimmer and make you feel more beautiful. And we will do that job. You'll just be the size you are. 
how many I asked in the beginning, how many of you all have seen yourself naked? Now, how many of you all are going to see yourself naked this evening or tomorrow morning? Please put all your hands up because don't feel shy. Because girl, my models who get one small pimple on their ass feel that they've gained one centimeter. It is rubbish. I look at myself and I say, I adore every wrinkle I have. My gravity is taking over, my backside is falling, your breasts are falling, it's fine. Uh, people, uh, one lady had the guts to tell me last week in a Bombay lift, you know your bags under your eyes. I told her, I said, and if you do a small operation, you look younger. I said, madam, I like my bags. One is Dior, one is Prada. <laughs> and now we'll open up for a quick session, a quick question answer session. Anyone who wants to uh, uh, ask questions? Are there no questions? Hands up? Oh, there we have. Just one. Okay. Hello, sir. Hello. Hi. Hi. I love you, sorry. I can't see you, but there you okay. It's typical Bengal side. Yeah. Oh. I just wanted to know, uh, ladies like me, uh, can wear Western dress? Western of course. Clothes? Of course, but I don't encourage you to wear Western dress. No, I'm not. I don't know. I'm not encouraging. <laughs> it is not like that. Uh, my my sort of face and figure is going to suit Western Mills. Ma'am, you saw uh, this lady in the black dress? Yeah. Are your legs good? No, I'm not talking about legs. I'm talking about the whole thing. Since the whole I, thing. I have a I have a typical Bengali face. Uh, see, so, I have a I have a rule. You wear what you are comfortable with and what you are stylish in. Don't let designers or anybody tell you this is a trend, this is in fashion, that is in fashion. Do you know the reason the most successful women in this country are well dressed is because they focus on their style. Whether it is Shobha Day, she knows exactly what suits her. Yeah, that's true. You have to build your style over the years and you don't build fashion over the years. The definition of fashion is clothes worn by a large group of people at any given point of time. You do not want to be a large group of people, right? You want to be yourself. Yeah. That is the central issue. I think you, last 20 years, I yes. uh, mean to sign. You hold, you hold colors against you, decide which color suits you best. Don't listen to anybody. You, you, you listen to your family and your loved ones because they'll tell you you're looking horrible in this color or looking great in this color. <laughs> I always tell my staff in my shop, Please don't flatter these women and say, ma'am, you're looking fantastic because you want to make a sale. No, we don't want the sale. We don't want the sale for only one reason, is that that lady is going to go home, her husband is going to laugh at her, children are going to laugh at her, and then she walks out into a party and becomes the worst advertisement for Vendor products. We don't want that. You wear what suits you, what style suits you, what makes you look taller, slimmer, and feel more beautiful. That's what Indian women are about. Do you think that way I'm dressed up? It's fine for me. Of course, it is fine for you. It's, it's my are you comfortable? Are you comfortable in what you're wearing? Definitely, yes. Yes. So comfort, comfort in India is above decoration and status. If some women are flaunting one, uh, one Birkin bag in my face, I tell them, what is in that bag? Is there football? <laughs> what, what's in this bag? Why are you bringing to this cocktail party? What do you need in your bag? Your lipstick? Your uh, credit card, your Aadhaar card, whatever else you need, I don't know. But you know it carries yellow crocodile birkin, so it's not happening. You just do what is comfortable for you. Most practical, I could have worn a big shawl and come, but I said, no, I'm sorry, I have to address the audience. So that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Last question. Oh my God, from a so, man. What? Yeah. Your story regarding the tribal women and the kundusari reminds me of one filmmaker who worked extensively with tribal women, women folk, it's Shyam Benegal. Yes, so, my, my friend. Yeah, Mr. Shyam Benegal. So I wanted to ask you that, do you think when it comes to the cinema which is based in Mofisil or the areas outside the cities where they get the, uh, the dressing or the costume designing right, or do you think there is a lack of creativity in that field? A lack of creativity in the rural landscape, is that what you yeah. mean? Yeah. No, in fact, I think there is a greater uh, joy and a greater uh, pride. Do you know, as I said earlier, when I travel, I only wear Indian clothes. 
Even if I'm traveling to Jaipur, I'm wearing my Indian clothes. Please wear them because you are the ambassador of all of us. And uh, 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 why are people going to places where, where women and men are wearing uh, silver necklaces and loincloths and whatever? Because they have preserved their identity as a culture. And we as Indians don't want to lose that culture. Please wear what is ethnic to you. Please wear what's in your DNA. Because that is the best you can wear. Thank you so much, Vedu. It was great having you here at the session. So glad, Tanya. I see you here. <laughs> and surely the session was uh, Sara ka Sara, I would say, would be, you know, rather than wearing clothes, wear your heart on your sleeves, right? That's how uh, life goes. <laughs> wear your heart on your sleeves, wear your size in your head, and enjoy life. This is a great life. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you so much, friend.